Today we're here doing actuators. These are gonna be for your surf tabs or center tab. And what these do is, as you know, control how your wave performs. These do go out occasionally. And one of the main or three main things I like people to carry on their boat, especially if you're an avid boater like this person, they're in this boat all the time, riding all the time. Uh, you should always have three things. An actuator, a ballast pump, and a spare prop. You never know what's gonna happen on your lake trip or when you're out for a week, like these people are out for weeks on end, riding every day. This is a key thing to have. It's also a simple way to test to see if the actuator is actually the problem or if the electronics are the problem. Having a spare actuator will eliminate a lot of troubleshooting because all you're gonna do is take this end, undo the Deutsch connector, plug it in, and then go to your dash and then hit up and down. If it works, you've immediately figured out it's the actuator. If you're on the water, you can test this from inside the boat, and then if it is, take it back to your trailer, pull it out of the water, or today, I'm actually on a hydro hoist. So we're gonna do this on a floating island, and we're gonna go ahead and install these on that floating island. So you can really do these anywhere, but if you have a trailer, you're out on a vacation, you just pull it out of the water, and it's really easy to replace. Same thing with the ballast pump. If you're not sure, you just have that spare ballast pump somewhere, you just plug it in, hit the button. If it works, all we're doing is changing the pump. The diag is done. If it doesn't work, then yes, further diagnosis would need to be done. Next step would be checking the breakers or fuses, guaranteeing that they're not blown, and most of the times it would be the pump or actuator that blew that. So once you reset it, test the new pump or actuator to see if it's working. If it is, then you've once again diagged your issue. So we're gonna go ahead and do that today and get started. So we have his dash on right now. It also has the manual options. So what we can do is we're gonna determine what's going on. I know the port tab is working, uh, but it's not going down all the way. It's been failing on him, so we're replacing that one automatically. Uh, for the starboard side or right side, if I press down, this is what he called me for. This one is not working at all. It's completely out. So once again, my diagnosis will be taking the actuator, plugging the new actuator in, which is the easiest thing to do, and hitting the button. If it works, we know it's the actuator and it's failed. So today we're gonna to be replacing two actuators. This video will probably just do the one, just so I can show you, and the other one will be the exact same. Every boat is different on the way that you unscrew it. Today I've already removed the side panels and I've removed the bags, just easier for me to get in. There's gonna be different screws. Sometimes, once again, you're looking this way, but if they're in this compartment, there could be screws up here on the top, on the board, or screws down here on this panel, and even screws into the floor. So you wanna see where they are, so I can simply move this around and kind of see where it's attached. Uh, right now we have these two screws, so we're gonna go ahead and take those out. And then we do have one up here on the top. If you have a cup holder nearby, always make sure to put them somewhere where they're gonna be safe, not fall. And there we go. So I don't have to take this wall all the way out, but a lot of these boats <clears throat> will come with the quick releases. So like this one, it's just a quick release. Goes up, locks the bag in place push down and then it opens this to release it, right? So we can take this wall completely out. By just redoing, undoing the quick, re quick release. You can set it right here take it in the boat just make sure you don't put it outside I'm floating again right so anywhere exterior of this boat I have the opportunity of losing this panel so now that we've located our actuator we've removed this back wall and we found the cord for the actuator and what we need to do now is test this you could take this and shove it in this hole um, I mean you run the risk of touching these so you don't want to touch them so the quickest way to do this without having to take this Deutsch connector off and then put it on this end is what we want to do is 
we want to take it and so he's got water in here too so it's probably dripping down from up here so what I'm gonna do is re-angle this because as you can see it's missing this grommet uh, might have been from the factory but because it's down like this it's filling it with water so what we're gonna do is take the zip tie off and I'm gonna re-angle it this way so that the female part is actually facing down and the water will not be able to enter this area. This could be a reason why his tabs are, or his actuators are failing, is because water is physically getting in there and it can't get in here, or it makes a connection when this is powered and can short out the actuator. This is probably what happened. So what I'm gonna do is flick it a few times, get most of the water out, uh, this actuator, this one's full of water, so I'm gonna have to dry this out a little bit just with a towel and clean it. So on the actuator side, these are the female ends. On the boat side, that's the male end. So all I wanna do is slide these over and I wanna make sure they don't touch because I'm gonna go up to the dash and hit this just to make sure that uh, the actuator works now. So we're gonna go ahead, go up to the dash, hit it, and we're just gonna guarantee that this tab is now, or this actuator, the new actuator, is going in and out correctly. All right, so we determined that the actuator works correctly, which means everything up to the dash is working correctly. Always try to start where your problem is. Don't start where you think it is. You've got to start with what's what that switch or button actually activates or works, right? So that's going to be this actuator. So I'm going to start at the actuator. As you saw, there was water in there, which is going to basically create these to basically make contact and slowly go out. And there are other reasons, as I stated, this just gets used too much and then it fails or water gets into it internally. These are billet aluminum now, not plastic. So these are gonna last a lot longer. So we're gonna go ahead and do that now and change it now that we know it's the actuator. Before we go to the exterior of the boat, we're gonna pull this off. There should be a little seal right here. So like I said, because it's missing, I don't carry these on me, especially mobile and I'm on the water. So what we're gonna do is basically when we re-zip tie this, we're gonna zip tie this facing down so that the water can't enter it. But in order to get this outside of the boat, I can't get it out with this on, so we need to remove this. You're going to need a small pick. Actually, this might just come right off because uh, it's missing the little seal. And then I can actually see rust in here. I don't know if you guys can, so that's really what's going on here. So uh, you need a little pick like this because way in the back, there's these two little clips. And you have to raise them in order to pull the cable out. So what I'll do is I'll put a little pressure on it, push on it with one finger and pull it out. So as you can see, it's not complicated. Once you know how to do it, a lot of people just don't know how, and then you're like scrambling because you don't want to break it. You think it comes from the back, but it actually comes from the front and that's it. We're gonna take this little seal off. We're gonna set it down here inside the boat. And now I can pull this through with no problems when I go to get the actuator off. Once again, I mean, I'm on the water right now, so you can do this anywhere you want at any time. Now what we have to do is remove this uh, actuator. So we're going to have to remove, bring the tab down, release it from the actuator to be able to remove it. Mastercraft uses a quick disconnect or a quick release pin. Uh, some manufacturers will use bolts. So depending on what you're on, you may need a ratchet, open end wrench. Uh, but this one uses a quick uh, disconnect pin. There are two spacers in here on each side. What that does is it keeps this actuator from hitting these corners and damaging the actuator. So I can't drop these, and because I'm on the water, I have to be very careful because they do not float. So we're gonna go ahead and get this tab off, bring it down, and then remove this actuator. Okay, and the other nice thing here is that these ones actually, oh, these ones are great. These ones actually slide in. So sometimes you'll take these off 
and this piece isn't there it's cut right here so all you have is this little roller and if you drop it it'll go into the water and sink see when this goes in through the hole it has a mushroom like spacer here or rubber grommet and it fits directly into here so as you push it against the boat it presses out so water can't enter but we're still going to put silicone on it as well as the, the screw holes so that no tiny leaks can enter the boat. So now all we're going to do is take this bracket off. This is the one that holds it against the bracket to the boat. We'll take this off. We're going to put it on the new one. And then we're just going to reinstall it the same way we took this one off. And uh, we'll go back inside and hook it up. Okay, so now we get this remounted the exact same way we took it off. We're going to leave this tab down because we've got to put it back through that hole. You want to make sure that when you put this little mushroom guy back on that it's tapered and the taper needs to go towards this uh, cap that's going on there so it fits in there. So we're gonna go ahead, we're gonna put it in this way so it's gonna go that way, like that. Put this on. this guy on it's okay if it flips over and over again just make sure that it's facing the right way when you're done and then the main thing here what we want to do is make sure we don't leave too much cord but enough cord because if you put too much cord out it can get tangled up if you don't do enough when the tub tab goes down it can it can uh, pull the cord Move this up what we're trying to do is just make sure that there's nothing there. Also, when I put it on there, as you can see, it's not on tight. If you put it on there tight, you're actually gonna bind it. These are lock nuts with nylon, so they can move freely, but the, you want it to move freely so that it doesn't get bound up. Then you'll take your silicone, move this back, and then just right behind that little mushroom, you're gonna put a bead of your silicone. I use Life Seal. This is white. You can use clear. Really, no need for 5200 once again. And then what we'll do is we'll take it and just push it against the hole and squeeze some in each hole for the screws. Go ahead and take this and then now as you push it forward it will go ahead and fill all of the holes and the screw hole We're going to go ahead and reconnect this inside here so it's really easy it's always the same you've got white to white black to black and we just want to make sure that we're connecting them back up the same way so take your deutsch connector see which way it goes in whoops wrong way and then look at your colors and then you're going to make sure that you put these in that exact same way so first step is putting back on the rubber seal sliding it down and then making sure 
but this is going to clip in the same way you took it out and it just slides in there and there's little locking tabs in there so you can't really mess it up too bad once you push it in it'll lock you'll hear them and then just give them a little tug and they don't come out and we're going to push this seal directly back up inside there so that no water can enter then you're going to put this clip back in this clip keeps these from falling down so this clip is very important because as you slide it in it's going to protect those wires from falling now they're right dead center of the holes you can plug it in once again i'm going to zip tie this up this way so that the female end is down so that way we can guarantee no water will enter into that plug again and that's it so now we're just going to put it all back together and we'll go out and test it on the water.